Good morning. Welcome to worship. So glad that you've chosen to join with us this day. This is the first uh, weekend of the new year of 2021. Today, our virtual worship is going to be a little simpler than usual. Uh, we're going to have a simple meditation on scripture. Uh, we will celebrate Holy Communion together, so you might want to uh, locate some elements there at home that you can use for uh, the body and the, the blood of our Savior. And then uh, also uh, a couple of uh, songs from Mark, one final Christmas carol as we uh, move out of the Advent season and into the new year, uh, and another song as well. And that will be our worship for the day. So glad that you have chosen to join us. I do invite you to join with me in this affirmation of faith as we begin our time together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Catholic Church. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. invite with, uh, you to read along with me today's scripture lesson taken from the prophet of Isaiah. Chapter 43, beginning in verse 16, we read these words of the Lord. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing, and now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. 
As you read through that passage, this first worship opportunity of 2021, God, our Heavenly Father, invites us to take a look both backward and forward as we continue our walk with him in this year. <laughs> I realize perhaps this year, more than uh, any in recent history at least, is a, is a year where we really want to put the previous year behind us. Uh, we would really like for 2020 to be fully and completely uh, a, a fog in our rearview mirror. Um, however, we know that life goes on and, and, and much of the realities that we experienced during 2020 continue with us into 2021. And yet on this first weekend of worship, it is very, very appropriate scripturally to take a moment to reflect upon where we've been and where we might be going in the future. And the words of the prophet Isaiah give us a good context, a good framework to, uh, to do just that. The passage begins by God reminding his people of Israel of the incredible miracle he did as he brought them out of slavery in Egypt and how he intervened on their behalf. Most of you know the story of how uh, Moses was sent to lead his people out of Egypt, that God provided the Passover lamb, uh, that God parted the Red Sea, and how he led his people through the wilderness uh, into the promised land. This is what he invited his children to look back and remember at the time when Isaiah wrote uh, the words of scripture that I've just read. Arguably, it is the miracle of miracles. It is the core promise of all the promises. It's the core memory of all the things that the children of Israel would remember and look back upon as a reminder of God's faithfulness, God's deliverance, that they were his chosen people, beloved by him, to bring uh, the message of his love not only to their own people, but to the nations around them. And so today, uh, like God invited uh, the children of Israel to do, I invite us to take a look back. I know it might be somewhat painful, but as you look back over uh, this previous year, 2020, uh, as you look in the midst of it, uh, you begin to realize that, you know, God shows up in some amazing ways, even in the midst of our trials. It's very interesting in the passage that I just read that the prophet makes a very subtle change in his uh, language as he moves through the passage. Uh, as he invites his people to take a look back and to remember the ways that he has delivered them in the past, providing them with a, an anchor, if you will, a, a memory that will fuel them to be able to trust him in the present. Uh, he says initially that he made a way through the sea and through the mighty waters. In other words, <laughs> He parted the waters, and the people of Israel walked through on dry land. And, and certainly, that is our preferred way of seeing God work in our lives as well. Please, God, just part the waters. Let me walk through on dry land. Uh, make a way through the wilderness. Just remove the obstacles and the danger from my life that I might uh, move ahead with ease and confidence. However, uh, the prophet uh, changes his language and when he talks about the current life of his people, he says, uh, uh, I am doing a new thing. But he says, uh, I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. In other words, uh, yes, God can, and as we reflect upon it, uh, does deliver us through the obstacles and through the difficulties. But more often than not, I'm afraid that uh, the language of the prophet is more accurate, that he delivers us in the midst of them. He leaves uh, much of the difficulty and challenge in place and promises that in the midst of it, he will provide. He will be with us. His presence will go with us. He will provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Even though all around us, uh, the, life, the world may seem uh, dry and barren, God says in the midst of it, I will provide that for you. So taking a look backward, as you reflect upon this previous year and what I know has had to be a difficult year for so many, uh, given uh, not just the pandemic, but all the normal issues and losses that we've experienced, 
try to think through, as you reflect upon it, where was God in the midst of it with you? What evidence do you see? In what ways did you experience God's presence, not necessarily through the removal of the trial, but through his presence in the midst of it? Uh, sometimes it's really important to take a look back and do just that, to take a few moments and, and, and look backward because it fuels our faith in the present, to go back and identify moments in the past where we experience God's presence even in the midst of great trial and of great loss. So as we begin this new year, I invite you to take a look back, not just to look back at the difficulties and trials, but take a look back and see now, maybe in hindsight, maybe in 2020 vision, where you can see the hand of God at work, sustaining and providing for you even in the midst of trials. A look back is very, very important. But it's also very important uh, to be looking ahead, to be looking ahead. Uh, God says, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. Now, he's certainly not telling his children, in light of everything he's already said, to literally forget. But what he's saying, don't get bogged down in how you may have seen me work in the past and expect me to always work in the same way now and in the future. So as you think about the future, and don't allow how I've delivered in the past, limit your thinking or faith that maybe uh, th I will deliver you in a little bit different way this time. Uh, keep your minds, keep your sides, uh, um, eyes open, your hearts open to what God may want to say and is saying to us uh, as we move into the future. Uh, as a congregation, as a church, what new things might God want us to be considering as we move into the future? This previous year has certainly been a year of learning where we've uh, had to try uh, new and different ways of connecting during a social distancing period, uh, new ways of doing church, uh, new ways of uh, doing the best we can to protect one another when we do gather together. All this has been incorporated uh, into our experience. And so we've already in the process of learning new things. In fact, the truth be told, God is always asking us to trust him in new things, not just at the beginning of a new year, but he is always saying, don't allow how I may or may not have worked in the past to limit your thinking, your vision, your heart for how I may want to uh, work in the present and in the future. Let's look back, let's look ahead, and then finally, let's look up. You know, the whole reason, as I uh, put this passage back up again, that God delivers us, is that uh, through that deliverance, through his mighty miracles, through providing us with streams in the wasteland, providing us with, uh, with uh, drink in the midst of it, and water in the wilderness, uh, the ultimate purpose is that uh, we might offer praise to God the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. It's an opportunity to pause and simply thank God and praise God for how we've seen his hand at work and to trust God for how we expect him to continue to work in the future. You know, it's fairly easy, I guess, to praise God when things are going well, but to praise him when he's chosen to leave us in the wilderness and simply meet with us there and deliver us in the midst of the wilderness, that's a little bit more difficult. But it does bear witness. It bears witness to others of our faith and trust as they see that even when it seems maybe God has not worked, that we continue to offer him praise and thanksgiving. It bears witness to friends and neighbors and families that our trust is not just something for a sunny day, but for a rainy day as well. And so uh, this uh, start of uh, a new year, I invite us not only to take a look back, not only consider taking a look forward, but also please take a look upward. Take a look and remind yourself that we serve a God who is not limited by our circumstances, who in many, many cases allows us to experience those circumstances, but never without his divine presence, never without providing us with water in the wilderness or streams in the wasteland. God bless you this new year. 
And in a moment as we celebrate Holy Communion together, it is our opportunity to continue to take a look backward, a look forward, and a look upward. The children of Israel looked back to the deliverance from Egypt as a, uh, a major milestone in the development of our faith. Today, as we look back, we look back at the ultimate fulfillment of God's deliverance found in Jesus Christ by his sacrifice on Calvary's cross in order that we might experience life. So this morning, as we take a bit of a look backward, let's remember the sacrifice made on our behalf by our Lord Jesus Christ. To do so, I invite you to read these words of faith with me. Therefore, loving God, recalling your great goodness to us in Christ, his suffering and death, his resurrection and ascension. And then moving on, we're looking forward, we look for his coming glory. We celebrate our redemption with this bread of life and this cup of salvation. And so we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, which we offer through Christ, our great high priest. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine, which we receive, may be to us the body and blood of Christ, and that we, filled with the Spirit's grace and power, may be renewed for the service of your kingdom. And so, as we enter into a season of remembrance as well as expectation of Christ's return, I invite you to reflect upon, first of all, the events that took place in the upper room just hours before Jesus Christ, our Passover lamb, went to the cross, where Jesus with his followers took bread, and he broke the bread, and he passed it to his uh, 12 disciples. He told them, this bread represents my body, which is given for you, and that they should continue to eat of it. And as they do so, that they should do so always and forever in remembrance of him. And so I invite you to do the same as Jesus invited his original disciples to do, to take the bread, to eat of it, remembering as you do, the body of Christ given for you, given for me, given for us all. In much the same way, after he had passed the bread and they had eaten of it, he also passed the cup. And as he passed the cup, he said, this cup represents a new covenant. Forget the things of the past. I am the fulfillment of all the promises of all the redemptive acts down through history. And so this cup represents my blood, which is going to be shed for you and for every man, woman, and child for the total and complete forgiveness and remission of sins. Please drink of it. And as you do so, please remember the blood of Christ shed for you, shed for me. God bless you. Happy New Year. I'm so very, very blessed to be your pastor. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, 
Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me. When the world's all as it should be, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise when the darkness closes in lord still i will say blessed be the name of the lord blessed be your name blessed be the name of the lord blessed be your glorious name you give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name, you give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name.